Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. I'm going to be taking a look at a little bit of Splat Moon Knight, but first I want to invite you guys to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available, and that helps mitigate the Kayfabe effect, which is what happens whenever we uh, put a video out in the morning by early afternoon, midday. The stuff we talk about is prohibitively expensive, if you can even find it at all online. Uh, also, if you watch these videos to the end, uh, in completion, what happens is that sh that sends our video content out to other comic book loving YouTube viewers, helps us grow our subscriber base, and we're very appreciative of the 61,000 subscribers that we have right now, but we are trying to get 6.1 million subscribers, man, so we still have a long way to go. Jimmy, the geeks have won. There's Moon Knight television shows, <laughs> man. Uh, which is ridiculous, but it's also the people who grew up with us are in those decision-making capacities, man, to allow a Deadpool movie to happen or a Venom movie to happen. And Moon Knight, there's a gulf, right? There's Bill Sienkiewicz Moon Knight with like a little cup of coffee, Kevin Nolan Moon Knight, a big chasm of nothing, and then the last like three, four issues of uh, Moon Knight Volume 3, you had this new kid on the block, man, Stephen Platt, doing uh, doing the penciling and inking on the stuff. And sort of there was that little bit of re a resurgence. You know, there was a reason to buy the comic. Uh, this was a period of time when it was, it, the, the creatives were selling books. You know, you didn't get it from Moon Knight. You got it for this crazy artwork from, from, from Stephen Platt. And it, it, you'd almost think uh, Garib Seamus was his uncle or something, because Wizard got behind him in a big way. Yeah. I learned about Stephen Platt from Wizard Magazine, Absolutely. where he becomes like the number one top hardest artist. And this is based on about four issues of Moon Knight. Yeah. Because I think his first one's issue 55, I think. And he doesn't draw all the remaining issues, 60 being the last one here. I think he draws like three. Yeah. So, I, you know, it's a small sample size, but takes the world the comics, the Wizard comics world by storm. So he's the hottest artist. This is the hottest back issue would be like his first Moon Knight issue. And of course, Bidding Wars. There's there's rumors in Wizard that he's going to do Cable, which looked pretty cool. A couple sketches of that pop up in Wizard. But of course, Rob Liefeld scoops him up and he does Profit, which again, looks super cool. Interesting to pair him with Liefeld creations either at Marvel or at Image. And uh, it's we'll get into it as we open this and kind of go down the rabbit hole of Stephen Platt. But coming into this week, I was like, Man, I'm I'm not down with Moon Knight Platt. Like these issues are they're not really good. No. This issue though, drawing wise, it might be peak Platt. He's inking himself on it. Um it's a little bit more clear than like a Prophet Five, which isn't Let's, saying much. But uh you, you can see what happens. Like we know he went to school with, with uh Michael Cho. Um so obviously another artist with chops. Platt, an artist with chops, but almost looks like a parody or a critique of image style art. I mean, this dude, Moon Knight, looks like he can squat 1,200 pounds. <laughs> you know, it's, it's taking the anatomical exaggeration that I loved from the image guys and, and just turning it up like three more notches past the 10. And again, we'll see it. You can see it on the cover. You know, this is a uh, a massive, massive muscled character it's a it's an example of uh that that old saying of like nature abhorring a vacuum uh because the image guys go away you know like todd mcfarland jim lee silvestri liefeld larson like they all go away and what is left at marvel is a bunch of kind of house style cats and in, in a big way and and whenever somebody shows some interesting chops sam keith jay lee they end up at image it was a foregone conclusion yes. that this dude was going there, man, uh, because it's super hyperbolic artwork of that same cut, and it's different from everything else. It's that whole example, too, of like put put them on a, on a crap book and then boost up the sales in a big way on that. So this issue is the one that everybody has. Right. I don't have the other issues. Yeah, I don't anymore either, but I've seen them. Yeah. You know, I, I've seen them on uh, on an iPad, so... I'm familiar with them, but I, I do think this is probably, arguably, his apex. You know, he's uh, this this first page is tough. It's on coated paper, so these millions of little tiny fine lines they either get lost or they bleed together. We will see it as the issue goes on. We learned some things from from uh, Liefeld in in our shoot interviews with him. 
when he wooed Stephen Platt over to, to uh, the image side, $40,000 an issue for 22 pages worth of uh, penciling and inking. And I uh, tried to read it. I tried to read it. I was like, you know what, man? We have a YouTube channel now. Like, uh, we, we, we get microscopic. We break comics down. I've never read this comic. I always just appreciate the drawing. I'm going to read it. How far did you get? I got about four or five pages, man. <laughs> and then I'm like, nothing means anything. Written by Terry Cavanaugh. And I'm not going to shit on him because, like, he did the Spider-Man with Jay Lee, right? Uh-huh. But this is the era where... Uh, you know, this is Marvel Comics, so Marvel Method, uh, presumably, is the way that this st st these stories are doled out, where the, where the artist has to do most of the plotting. But the artists at this era are not thinking about telling stories. They're thinking about drawing two-page spreads that they could sell for five figures. They're thinking about drawing characters with three, three legs. legs. right? I know, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I stared at this so many times, like, what is this? And then here's what I would do. You should be learning this as, like, your anti-tangent uh, class at, at Qbert. <laughs> like, I looked at this, right? And then I'm like, where's the three-legged guy? Yeah. I can't find him. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. It's this shit, dude. It's, this feels like, I mean, this, this is an image comics two-page spread, and I'll go one further. It's an extreme Image Comics two-page spread. I mean, isn't this like Bloodstrike or Brigade or any of those kind of books? It's funny because there is a character called like Blood something in here. Sure. Oh, my goodness. It's and, wild. And then when you break it down and then you just like look at the cylinders, it's like cursory knowledge of all the bits. When you, But then you, if you just ply so much line art on top look of it. Look at the number, like... Not one character upside down, not two characters upside down, four upside down characters. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's, and by the way, it's, it's three pages of them falling <laughs> and look at the distance that they fell. <laughs> and this guy should be just dead. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wild stuff. I like you. I thought I, I'm going to see how, how much of this I can read. And I read some Moon Knight, you know, coming up, and it's just, I, I was very lost. Yeah, it doesn't read like anything, uh, but once again, I, like, I think Terry Cavanaugh just did the best he could with the stuff that he received. How many heads tall is this figure? Yeah, for sure, man, and Splat was, like, working so hard on that two-page spread that we're going to let color take care of that background. <laughs> yeah, look at that. I know, there's even the bleeds. <laughs> This is, I mean, he's fresh to comics, brand new, you know, and like this is that amateurish piece where it's like, I want to draw this cool thing, but all this other nonsense bores me. You develop your patience muscles the more pages you churn out. You know, that's the part, like going back to what I was saying about this dude comes out of art school and he sort of just homogenizes the most popular styles. Yeah. You know, that's part of the new to comics thing where it's like, it really feels like he looked around and went, okay, Jim Lee, you know, Dash of Jim Lee, there's Todd McFarlane. It really just feels like this is an image audition. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comic books that we make uh, out right now, man. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue one, two, three, and potentially issue number four. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Every issue is completely self-contained, so when you see these comics out in the wild, scoop it up. You're going to get a full experience, and if you dig it, go grab another issue by Jim Rugg. A Hulk Grand Design Monster, Hulk Grand Design Madness. The man takes 300 issues of Incredible Hulk per issue and crams them into a succinct 40-page story, an incredible romp that encompasses all of the best hits from Incredible Hulk lore. In stores now, scoop up these books. Now that we're done paying the bills, back to the video. Looking for a new way to enjoy your favorite comics and manga? Comixology Unlimited has you covered. With Comixology Unlimited, you get an unlimited access to an unrivaled library of over 40,000 digital comics, manga, and graphic novels, featuring content from over 125 publishers and thousands of independent creators from around the world. And if that's not enough, you can also save up to 15% when buying select new and current comics. Try Comixology Unlimited today with a free 30-day trial and then just $5.99 a month afterwards. For details, visit Amazon.com slash Comixology Unlimited. <laughs> None of these guys are cool. <laughs> like, this dude has, like, uh, the Professor X wheelchair. Also, always, always bad when your heroes cry. <laughs> especially, especially as, like, butch as these comics are, man. 
These marks also remind me, um, one of the image appeals you always hear is it kind of looked like something we could draw. There's that quality here where like, it feels like a uniball pen mm -hmm. to me, this line work. And I drew with those, you know, like I was constantly trying to figure out like, how do you draw these marks that I'm seeing? And it feels like that kind of tool here rather than say a Hunt 102. And I don't know what he drew this with, but just the nature of these lines to me says, I can I can kind of emulate this in my notebooks. Yeah, I mean, Rob Leffield in our last conversations, he, he said that like he got turned on to fine liners by Stephen Platt, who never used the, the dip pens whatsoever. Looking at the work here, man, I start to feel busily. Yeah. Which is which is not something that really came to mind very much with his work. I mean, dude, that's the Professor X chair. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and just always pushing those poses, no matter what. But when you get down to it, there really is like maybe three poses. That, yeah, that's flat employee. Like, you know. But but these were the poses you wanted. Yeah. You know, like this is the stuff I was again copying in sketchbooks is like the the front view, just giant muscles, grimacing, everything is flexed all the time. As much ink as I can put on a face and it still looks sort of like a face. Jimmy, you think he was uh worrying about the spread here? <laughs> I don't think he was worrying about was anything. Was he using a the geometric shapes and squares and triangles to compose these pages. Yeah, put the golden uh, the golden right in the ratio on top of this. See what you get. <laughs> and this is the last issue, uh, but it's funny that everybody has this issue because print run went up. It did, yeah. You know, even for the last issue, it's probably the only issue that where where that print run goes up. Uh, you know, based on oh, there was enough buzz that they could adjust it or orders. You know, stores ordered more or whatever. Um, so wild, like it's very rare that an artist actually joins a book and the run goes up. Right. It's a special thing if you can increase sales. Great. One of my favorite spreads in Absolutely. this thing. Absolutely. The double lighting, such a staple of that 90s image style. Allowing some of the white spatter to also affect the line art of the drawing. So you see spatter like throughout Moon Knight here. Uh, and just like I would fixate on these little ticks and stuff. And when you're a kid copying drawings, you imagine that like every piece of ink that was put down was so deliberate and considered and thought out. So like you're trying to draw like when you're redrawing, you're, you're like, OK, I got to put three ticks like mm -hmm. on this mask piece right here, this hood. Uh, Talk about like ha having your focus on the wrong part. Oh, totally. Totally. Fully admit it. it. It's interesting to chart his course through comics, too, because this stuff is probably some of the more raw drawing that he does. Yeah. Like, wild yeah uh you know you'll see him progress and get kind of better at comics better at anatomy but it becomes as it becomes more natural it becomes less interesting to me, me and too. i mean i follow him on social media so like he just did a run of uh, walking dead covers and like he could draw everything you know what i mean he's, he's one of those guys but there's something about like the weird outsider quality that makes this stuff it gives it the style it's it special gives it its own thing yeah absolutely these little marksmen are like Wildstorm, Homage Studios, Laser Beam, Energy Marks. Yeah, almost uh, Kirby Crackle filtered through that Scott Williams like, well, you can't just make it a black dot. Let's render each dot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Michael Cho, you brought him up, man. Uh, he said that like when those guys were in school, one of the guys that uh, Platt was looking at the most was uh, Ralph Steadman. So when I see, start to see spatter and things like that, and then even just like these like black ticks that come off, like that, you like you see that in uh, Stedman's work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, look, it makes sense when you said Bisley. You yeah, know, I think there's some of that kind of chaotic mark making in his stuff too. <laughs> we just saw that pose on the previous page, except the hand was uh, like this. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting serious now. He's making a fist. <laughs> that face. Look how look at how intense that face is. <laughs> What's that? Is that a mouth? I think it's a mouth. Oh, that's too much. The only background we see in the entire project. And that and that is like that is like when you just start learning perspective and start rolling some stuff. Like that's the background that you make. Reminds me a little bit of Frank Tarrant, especially like this back silhouette, mm. some of the debris going up in the explosion. All of these weird characters then. It's bizarre. And I don't even think they say their name with a lot of these characters in this goddamn comic. How about you're the letterer here? Giant open space. But let's put the lettering up here. Cover up a little bit of drawing. Cover up her forehead slightly. <laughs> you know what, man? It might have been just straight up lettered on the board. And, and uh, that's possible. You got you to you gotta think ahead of time. And if you don't, you're in trouble. 
Look at that, dude. It's just like the cover. Except it's not. Of course, the classic no. <laughs> she can't hear me anymore. <laughs> it's the last issue, man. We gotta kill her. We gotta kill her guy and send him out with a Viking's funeral. Man, that early digital coloring. It's incredible. They're doing that digital coloring on their uncoated paper. Yeah. And it's like, it's such an early stage. Marvel was like two years behind Image. They were. On, on getting that digital color. I remember whenever Jay Lee transitions over to Image and there was an interview somewhere and they were talking about like, you can put a name war next to like the Youngblood strike file. And it's, if you're the artist, you would always pick the Youngblood strike file. You know, it's, it's such a different presentation and they existed at the same time. Same panel blown up with the little hand added right there <laughs> dude it's not a hand it's not a hand that's his like tattoo or whatever his chest emblem this piece oh oh gotcha right there <laughs> i guess closing his eyes or something yes that's that's right <laughs> can't you see how open they are <laughs> i know <laughs> his face look at that stuff going on i hate that guy with his little twirly woolly fingers mustache yeah some of that doesn't add up Man, the traps, though. Good <laughs> yes. on him. Yes. He has that um, Greg Capullo kettlebell. That he this could be your neck. cover of the full moon zine. They're really bringing that moon. This is like the boring X-Men. It's so, like Platt drew so many good moons. Like whenever he was drawing some of the Prophet stuff, it, like Crypt, I remember like these enormous moons behind these characters with all the details. Yeah, man. <laughs> Legacy of being a moon knight starting out on moon night. Little McFarlane here. That's who you would get uh, a lot of comparison in Wizard Magazine. They would mention McFarlane. And I think it was because of the number of lines. It's the cape, too. Like, just trying to do interesting things with the cape. But this is totally McFarlane buildings with, with all these, like, radio towers or whatever, whatever the hell is on top of these buildings. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of neat to think of who that early... Like, like if Marvel would have been able to keep that second wave of image guys, like the Jay Lees... Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of interesting to think of what their stable would look like if they right. kept hold of those guys. Right. And this is like the end of a uh, Hellraiser movie with the big uh, Muppet that takes the box away. <laughs> How's that for pathos? Yes. And then they just don't even bury it. It's like, yeah, dude, it's, we'll show you two versions of the same drawing. And then that does become crypt. Yeah, it does. Just put an axe in his hand. Is that really the same drawing? Just no, like it's a not. mirror? No, it's not. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. Boy, it's close. Here's what I will say, though. Like, the the way he figured things out, like, it feels like that character is solidly standing on this foot right here. I mean, the biggest, again, the biggest legs and quads oh, of yeah. anybody. Yeah, man. Which is what it, f it felt intentional. Like, okay, I'm going to go do these things and I'm going to push it. I'm going to be the, the biggest muscle dude. The guys that we talked about, like from that era, you know, we had Joe Q uh, on on the channel, and he was talking about like what was needed in 1990s comics. We had to be extreme with our poses, with our artwork and stuff. And it is funny that Joe Q sent, you know, Azrael pages or whatever to Alex Toth for for critique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to hear Alex Toth way in on this moonlight. <laughs> I'd like to hear people watching this because you know if you're younger, if you're if you didn't get on plat, you know, whenever this happened, I don't know how you make heads or tails of it now. Yeah. You know, if, if you removed my nostalgia, if you just put this in front of me and was like, this is a new guy, check it out. I can admire the quad muscles. That dude's doing his leg workouts. But after that, it gets really hard for me to like figure out what is this? It's so peculiar. It's so of that time. Yeah. You know, it feels like this is your, the Omega version of the image guys. Yeah. Like to synthesize what they had captured um, that's kind of what I think of when I think of Platt. So if you remove that context, I am curious how people respond to this. Yeah, we'll put it, put something in the comments, man. Listen, there's a Moon Knight TV show. What <laughs> Does he look like this? What better excuse to, <laughs> to put the, uh, the, the one Stephen Platt issue that we all have under the microscope and give it the microscopic view? He looks like if you ever search for like some kind of bodybuilder reference on, on a Google image, you'll get stuff that's just completely doctored, manipulated things. That's what this character design looks like. Totally, man. Or those like body dysmorphic guys that are like, I'm still fat. And they, and they keep doing like, <laughs> right. like, like, yeah, the, yeah. like presses and stuff to the point where they pop their shit out. And, and steroids. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. That dude's heart is not good. No. Lyle El Zato in two seconds. I mean, it, dude... 
he just died. You that's know? right. Like maybe, that's right. Maybe that ch- heart exploded. Yeah, I didn't stick with reading the story, so maybe it was uh, a case of s- 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 steroid <laughs> abuse. Mark Spector, man, it's just like <laughs> juicing up in the in the office at Spector Corps. <laughs> Let's get out of here, man, before we uh, before we get too too deep, man. Okay, favorites, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness are in comic shops everywhere right now. While supplies last, it's a retelling of the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk, paying homage to some of my favorite Hulk artists. I'm writing, drawing, coloring, lettering, all of that stuff. Pick those up and then join me on patreon.com slash jimrug to see more of my comics and how I make them. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue one, two, and three in stores as we speak. Murder on the dark web for fun and profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Uh, Banned in 28 countries, banned in 10 comic shops. But if you hit my link tree in the description below this video, you'll be able to order and pre-order Red Room Comics. You can also hit up my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. For three bucks, you can uh, read the archive of Red Room comics that I've supplied up there. More than 200 pages worth of comics right now. Uh, I put up new strips every Tuesday. What else, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. It's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, dude, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.